the way we plan our day, our week, our life should be efficient but serve our emotional needs too. There are many efficient techniques to plan your day. If you are not new to this channel, then you will know I have tried many different methods and combinations over the years and one of the techniques I've enjoyed the most has been, for the most part, calendar blocking. But recently I faced a conundrum. I realized this way of planning my day, micromanaging my time block by block, was satisfying and efficient when my life and my mindset allowed it which thankfully lasted for almost a year of using this method. But when I entered a slump in August, that method wasn't working anymore, and I felt confused. It worked for so long, whether I was tired or energized, motivated or not. So what changed? What I realized is that as your life changes, you need to cater to other needs as well, other perspectives, other not so efficient methodologies that help you face productivity as a complement to your life rather than its main baseline. I always defended that any productivity methods you pick and use should be tailored for you and not the other way around. But in the middle of the road, I think I got lost and forgot my own teachings. I rediscovered the pleasure of taking a slow approach to planning. I got a simple lined daily journal from Moleskin, and I re-experienced the feeling and the texture of the paper, the smooth flow of the pen, the anticipation of a blank new page. More than a tool of productivity, this way of planning, a way of facing tasks, chores, and life's daily challenges, became a tool of self-care during a time when I desperately needed that self-care, a time when I needed to avoid systems that didn't work for me anymore, because I simply couldn't match the energy and the ability to create that I had before. And using this approach, I wanted to ultra-simplify, cut back on what I thought was essential in my routine, and minimize it even more. Going from a structured sequence of colored blocks in a digital calendar to a simple to-do list with just a couple of items written in a black ink pen. And I only added more items as I crossed the previous ones off, avoiding too much pressure, giving myself grace and taking one breath at a time. Keeping away from that feeling of overwhelm, that media, the hustling culture and our social fabric sometimes create in us. So my message for you today is simple. I don't want to talk about the pros and cons of one method over the other. I do not wish to promote a specific way to get organized and get your work done. Overall, different things will work for different people in different times in their lives. If something isn't working for you anymore, that's not your problem. It's a sign of growth, which is something that should be welcomed and praised instead of frowned upon. Give yourself the opportunity to explore new ways of living your life, whether those ways are reflected in your entire career path 
or simply in the scent of the candle you light at night. Sometimes big decisions offer small life transformations, and other times the smallest decisions provide the biggest change. So stay in tune with yourself and trust your gut. What you're watching now on the screen is a snippet of a full-length video where I go through all productivity apps and I select the best ones. The best calendar, the best to-do list, the best app for workspaces, and so on. However, this video right here is only available on Nebula. All of the videos I post on Nebula are ad-free and sponsor-free, and some of them, like this one, aren't available anywhere else. And on top of that, you also have access to all scripts from YouTube videos, exclusive resources, exclusive articles, and so much more. And there are other creators there too. You can find Thomas Frank, Ali Abdal, and so many people from the STEM community. And the good news is you can get Nebula for free if you subscribe for CuriosityStream, who is sponsoring today's video. And this is like a two-in-one package. With CuriosityStream, you can watch high-quality documentaries on the go, on science, history, psychology, you name it. I actually have my own list of favorites, which I will show you right here on the screen. You can get access to both platforms for $14.79 for a whole year. And that's basically $1.20 a month. And the only thing you have to do is click the link below, sign up for CuriosityStream, and that's it. As simple as that. So go to CuriosityStream.com slash corner to start watching today. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Stay cozy and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.